Hi guys, good morning. In this video, we are going to see the question count sub arrays with fixed bounds. So for let's, let's first quickly see the question. Uh, you are given an array nums with two integer min k and max k. Uh, min k is the minimum value in the sub array which is equal to min k and maximum value in the sub array is equal to max k. Cool. A fixed bound sub array of nums is a sub array that satisfies the following condition that in that sub array the minimum element it should be min k and the maximum element it should be max k and the rest of the element they should be between min k and max, max k okay return the number of fixed bound sub arrays number of such sub arrays in that main array let's say if this is the main array so we need to find the number of such sub arrays in this array okay a sub array is just a continuous part of an array cool let's have a quick example so basically he just said that min k is 1 max k is 5 which means that i need to choose a sub array such that its min k is 1 and max k is 5 i'll choose a particular sub array like this which is 1 3 so here the min k minimum element is 1 but maximum element is 3 it's not 5 so i just can't choose it i'll try to choose this here it is minimum element is 1 maximum element is 5 it's a good sub array i'll just count it as 1 cool now i choose another one let's say this one here the minimum is 1 maximum is 5 it's a good sub array cool my answer is 2 now let's see if more um i'll go on up to here here the minimum is 1 but the maximum is 7 it's not 5 so it's not a good sub array i can't choose it here i go on here also as the 7 comes again so it's not a good sub array okay now let's start from here so if i go at 3 and 5 here the minimum is 3 not 1 but it should have 1 so i just can't choose it it's not a good sub array i'll just move ahead here also one is not there i just can't choose it then i move ahead here also one is not there i can't choose it here also i move ahead here also one is not there i can't choose it then i go on here one is not there i can't choose it here also one is not there i can't choose it here also the one is not there i can't choose it then i go ahead here also one is not there i can't choose it and also like five is not there but still you got the point right here also one is not there i can't choose it then at last here one is not there i can't choose it so finally the answer was two so you got it that a brute force intuition is that i just go on to every such sub arrays and find okay is my minimum and maximum are there in that sub array. If there are, it's good. So basically, to go on to all the sub arrays, it will take O of n square. And basically to check, okay, if I have all the elements between minimum min k and max k, it will take a next n. You can optimize this n. That okay, you can just pick up it. Okay, in this range, you have maximum minimum. What is that? So maybe you can able to reduce O of n square, but still you are always moving to every sub array of this problem so it will still be of n square but let's see that if it would be possible for us to do in of n square or we have to optimize it let's see this example here the minimum is one maximum is also one just same it's also valid it's also valid it's also valid it's also valid and the same goes that it's also valid oh it's also valid it's also valid right because see minimum and maximum are both same so one element array is also valid right so again it's also valid it's also valid and at last it's also valid so basically every sub array of this array is valid thus we have an answer of 10 now let's see the constraints the constraint says that number length is 1 e 5 so for sure o of n square would not work we have to optimize it to o of n log n or o of n else it will not work so let's give it a thought so firstly we have that min k is the minimum value which i need to search for and max k is the maximum value which i need to search for all right cool now let's think okay what is this minimum and maximum mean so basically if i have a sub array like this x1 y5 z q where x y z q and are some elements some elements any numbers 
Here, let's say the minimum k I choose as 1, maximum k I choose as 5. Okay, cool. Then, if this particular array in blue, if it needs to be good, so the rest of the elements, which mean x, y, z, and q, they need to be between 1 and 5. They can't be less than 1 or more than 5. Right. So, all these elements, it need to be between min k and max k. Right. Which means that I will can put a random value. Let's say I allotted as 2, 3, 4 and 3. So it is okay. It's value that okay. It can have these values. But if let's say the value would have been something like this, that if my min k is 1, max k is 5 and I put something more than 1, more than 5 or less than 1. Let's say if I put 7. So now I can't include this whole array. Now it's not a valid array. I can on other hand, I can include this part maybe. If this particular element is also less than my min k or the element is more than max k. So for just naming, okay, I just can't include that element which is less than min k or more than max k. So let's name this element as we named, okay, minimum element is min k, maximum element is max k. So let's name this maximum or the element which is more than max k or less than min k, let's name this element as bad k and the index at which that element is present as bad i. So I will do one thing. I will have the index of minimum element, which is a max, which is a min k as min i. I will have the index of the maximum element as max i, which is actually a max k and the index of the bad element, which I am naming as bad k, and bad k is what? Any element which is more than my max k or less than my min k. Let's name it as bad k and I'm the indexing I'm name is naming it as bad i. Cool. Now if I have these two things like bad k, min k and max i. So what all possible things can happen? Possible things can happen is that my min k is here, my max k is here and my bad i is before it. My min i is here, my max i is here and my bad i is before it or my bad i it can come between my min i and max i or my bad i can come after my min i and max i. Cool. So let's think okay if it is the case that okay min i max i bad i it's a one case but if it would have been a case of min i a max i so as i need to include both my min i and max i in my sub array because my sub array need to have both min i, min I and max i and let's for now assume that rest of these pink elements are not a min i and a max i it's just that it's a one min i one max i and one bad i cool so i need to for sure include this particular array but if i include this particular array then my bad i will always come so i just can't include this because bad i is for sure about to come right so i can't okay cool now other case what happened was okay max i and min i i can include this i'm not saying how many numbers but yeah i can include this what if it would have been a case like this a min i a max i Shall I include it again that, okay, the bad eye is not here, but I can include this again. Can I? See, if you look closely, if I just put my iteration on from left to right only, that I just moving from left to right only, then I would be standing at this eye, right? If I'm moving from left to right, I'm iterating on my array, I will be standing on this eye. So I am for sure bound to include this particular array, right? So if I'm standing at this index and I'm including that, I'm standing at i and I'm including that which means I'm seeing from here up till the left. If I'm standing here, so I'm seeing from here up till the left. So it's like that we can just take this consideration and move from left to right and see, okay, if I have some element and if it is possible to get me because if see, if I'm standing here and I am bound to move from here, so which means that I have to include this element also. But as it is a bad element, so I cannot include it. So it will result me a zero value. It's not possible, right? It will result me a zero value. It will result me a zero value. It will result me some number of cases. Let's say ABC or X. It will result me X cases. Okay. X can be possible number of good sub arrays if I'm standing here at I. Let's see how many they can be there. But now you got the point, right? It can have three options, one option, two option and three option, two option, three options. It will result me a zero value because 
ऑफ कोर्स बैड एलिमेंट विल लाई इन दैट सब एरे एंड इफ बैड एलिमेंट लाई इन दैट सब एरे इट्स नॉट अ गुड सब एरे सो आई जस्ट ओनली इंक्लूड दीज काइंड ऑफ सब एरे कूल नाउ लेट्स सी हाउ मेनी सब एरे कैन बी देयर राइट इफ एज आई सेड दैट आई विल बी स्टैंडिंग एट दिस पर्टिकुलर इंडेक्स राइट सो इफ इफ माई मिन के इज हेयर माई मैक्स इफ माई मिन आई इज हेयर एंड माई मैक्स आई इज हेयर it's indexing and you can just replace by the bad elements which means max k and min k so if my min i is here max i is here which means that for sure i need to include the whole particular min and max range so it's a one sub array but now you can easily see one thing also that the previous element it can also be included but we also know that max i is for sure bound to include and i am standing at my i i is i am standing at my max i and i have to look before it okay cool so i can include this element and as i said the pink ones the element and the pink ones are the ones which are between min i and max i or equal to also but it is never beyond that bad i is just beyond elements cool then i can also include this so you can easily see that because of this min i i had this particular thing i had the particular thing right here and also this here Which means the indexing indexing would have been let's say zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I just choose these three kind of elements to get my sub arrays, which is from here, from here, and from here. So it's kind of like I just choose a min i minus bad i, right? I just choose the number of arrays as min i minus bad i. It will just give me the number of good sub arrays, which also include a min i max i. and does not include a bad i cool now let's see if i would have moved ahead which means that if i would have moved to the next i now what would have happened again i would have included this thing particular now previous element can also be included and also the previous one because they are good but i'm standing at i so i need to include my i also so you can again see that because of this i will have to start from min and i i have to end at i which means i have to start from min i have to end at i how many previous i can go back i can go back three which is actually the same as min i minus bad i again at standing this i i can just go and check okay how many number of good sub arrays are there it's min i minus bad i cool very good then again let's see if i would have moved to the next index i so again i have to start from min i up to that particular index and it's a good index because it's not a bad index so i can just again go and see here again go and see here it's still min i minus bad i so we can always say that okay at every index when i am standing i'll just check from here if i have some max i some min i and some bad i so i'll just say okay i'll just do a min i minus bad i to get the number of sub arrays from i up till the, that particular bad i because see beyond that bad i if i go beyond that bad i that bad i will always get included which means the bad element will always get included and then it won't be a good sub array so i just don't want to include it so after that bad i and up till that i how many number of sub arrays are there it will be given by min i minus bad i but one thing you will say aryan uh, who said is thing that min i which means the minimum element will always lie before a maximum element it can be the case that max i is here and min i is here i will say you are correct i never said that so what can also happen is that my max i is here and my min i is here so what i can do is that whosoever is before which means i'll take the minimum of minimum of max i and min i and then i'll just do a minus of bad i it just says that okay whosoever is before whosoever no matter if a max i or a min i whosoever is before i'll just subtract a bad i from that element cool so i just showed the same thing here i'll just choose the minimum of min i minus max i like minimum or maximum the minimum out of minimum min i and max i and i just subtracted a bad i as i showed here it's exactly the same thing right and it's the same that okay if i am standing at a bad index i just can't include it 
so for sure it will result me a zero value now how to counter it in our example which means that see if i will just use this formula so min i is here max i is there let's say it's zero it's five it's seven so by our formula i'll just get a minimum as a zero out of zero and five it is zero minus a bad i which is actually seven so is it that i am getting minus seven number of good arrays? no right it's just that okay it's nothing so whenever the number goes negative which means that okay i am not getting anything so i just need to say that okay if the number was negative just take zero so we can just write that okay have a maximum with zero so whatsoever value comes here we can have a maximum with zero and we are good to go because if, if this number goes negative it means that there are no sub arrays if there are no sub arrays which are good for that particular index i so i just don't want to take it if i don't want to take it i'll just won't and i'll just have a zero in place of that and thus at every i will just iterate on every index and see okay if my answer is there answer is there answer is there and i will just keep on adding this value it will give me the total number of sub arrays and as we are iterating just once on every part which means i just iterating on every index only so it's just o of n algorithm and we just cracked it so let's see the quick code quickly it's pretty simple we just have to update my bad index which means my bad i have to update which is just a bad element and what's a bad element any element which is more than max k or less than min k so any element which is more than max k or less than min k is just a bad element so i updated my bad index right any element which is a min k it's a minimum index element so i just updated my min i any element which is the maximum element i just updated as a max i and ultimately i showed you the formula how we reach to this which is exactly the same as we saw above right that we just have to do a answer plus maximum of zero comma this particular value which will return me for that particular index standing at that index how many number of good sub arrays can be there which does not include my dirty bad element and always have my min and the max and here i just allotted some default values to get the answer so that was the code i hope that you guys liked it if yes then do let me know your approaches what you thought and what intuition part you thought was useful and yeah see you guys next week until then bye bye take care